Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here, and it's an exciting day to be an Apple user. Today, iOS 13.4 has been released, and it brings with it exciting new features such as the trackpad support for iPads, iPhones, and a host of other changes. I'll be covering the biggest changes and some of the more recent stuff here as there are simply too many features to list. But let's go ahead and start, and I'll begin with the new iPad trackpad stuff. It's actually super exciting. So let's just agree to pretend this is the new iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard it really doesn't matter as these features work with any trackpad and any mouse and it completely changes the way your iPad works. It's unbelievable that Apple added this in a 0.4 release. Okay, so first off the hover feature. So wherever your cursor is, you'll notice that icons do react. You'll notice they will hover, especially useful in settings to know where you're about to click. Strange, in settings they don't have any sort of hover feature to know where you're hovering, but in Safari, other apps, You'll notice that it is built for it. So as you can see, the cursor does highlight and auto select certain icons. So that's pretty cool. And I can totally see Apple add more support in future applications. Another thing is if you hold and press, it'll bring up the haptic touch menu right here. So as if you were holding and pressing it on the iPad, super neat. And you can grab an app and just drag it away to move it right away. How neat is that? You don't need to wait, sit there with your finger on the screen, easily drag it and move it. A very neat thing is if you're in an app, and you bring the cursor down, it'll bring up the dock right here. You can quickly jump between applications. And to activate slide over from within an app, just drag to the right and the slide over app will pop up. Also in the general settings, Apple did add a new section for trackpad right here. So with one connected, you'll easily be able to control it without having to dig in accessibility settings. So trackpad and mouse will be in here. Also Apple has added new keyboard shortcuts in the iPad app, just hold the command button to see what's available from within an app, hold one, and there are more options here. So Apple has completely changed the iPad experience, made it more versatile in many apps. And I'm very sure that Apple will expand support on this with time in many more applications with added features. And moving to the iPhone, these features are of course available on iPad OS as well. So in messages, Apple has added new Memoji stickers. So there are nine new ones, including this MacBook one and several new expressions. And Apple has added a new Shazam action in the Shortcuts app. It works, but a bit redundant when Siri can do this, although it does still work good. Not very pretty, but it does the job. In Safari, when haptic touching a link, there's now an option to just open. Previously, just open a new tab, and to open it, you'd have to click on the preview. And just when I thought Apple was done playing with the X buttons in Safari, there's yet another new one, a square one. You better betcha that'll be rounded again in iOS 14. In the Photos app, you can now drag this segment control down here. Previously, you could not in 13.4, and it seems so obvious, but it's nice that Apple added that. And Apple has finally fixed their Mail app. Clicking into an email down here, you'll notice they gave you more control with the Mail toolbar. So now you have the additional option to add to a mailbox and to compose a new message from within an email. In the Files app, you now have the option to share iCloud folders. So 3D touch on them, and you have the option to share an entire folder. Also, Apple has fixed the very unstable and unreliable AirDrop feature. Now it properly displays how many devices are available. And on the top shelf, you have available AirDrop devices and your recents, which is a very nice touch, previously not available in 13.3.1. And notice that there's this new visual. This is new in the recent betas. So around the AirDrop devices, there's this ring that activates as soon as you move your device. Thought that was a nice touch, definitely integrated with a U1 chip. In the TV settings, you now have the option to stream data over cellular using data saver or high quality, and same thing over Wi-Fi. Also with downloads, you have the option between fast downloads and high quality. Also in the TV app, this is the view for the next upcoming episode. So slightly refined. In wallpapers, Apple has placed the icon letting you know that there is a light and dark version available. Evenly in the middle, looks much better. There are a number of changes in the music application. In 13.4, Apple is further refining their craft here. So starting with a new splash screen, which lets you know you can automatically download music when you add it to your library. It seems to be on some sort of timeout right here and will automatically dismiss. If we haptic touch on a song, you'll notice play later has been replaced by play last clarification there, much needed. Also in the up next section, up next has been renamed to playing next. And inside of a song, if we go here to next up, you'll notice the shuffle and repeat buttons have swapped places. Still the same function though. Also in the lyrics view, if you select a verse, it'll have this white outline on it, making it easier to know what you're clicking on, where before it didn't have that. And selecting a verse will activate haptic feedback on your phone. 
It's a nice little confirmation. Within Wallet, Apple services used to just be a gray wall. Now Apple actually lets you see which Apple service you paid for with a nice icon. And all iPhones with a home button now have the status bar visible in the control center. It's nice, very similar to what you'll see on the iPhone 10 and above interface. Just cool that they're updating the older phones with newer features. And Apple has made extensive changes to the Find My App in 13.4, clearly preparing it for the new Apple AirTags. A lot of the icons are updated, new ones, and things are just looking a little bit cleaner. Apple has also fixed the interface for getting directions in map, now cleaner instead of having all this junk on the bottom. And Siri can now take you to the home screen from within iOS 13.4, that's a new feature. Also starting with iOS 13.4, on the bottom of your AirPod settings, you now have the option to disconnect or forget this device. So Apple just consolidating those settings into one place. And Apple has further refined CarPlay extensively, starting with support for extra wide displays, such as on BMWs, and the windows now for now playing or for the call screen are dynamic. So depending on what else you have going on, they can shrink or grow. And as you can see here, much more visually pleasing on iOS 13.4. And again, found in 13.4, car key is a new feature where you'll be able to store your car's keys on your iPhone for different cars and use NFC to unlock them even if your iPhone is dead. It's unclear when Apple could activate this, but it seems that 13.4 is the baseline firmware for this feature to work. And more recent icons have shown how that grouping will look in iOS 14, super interesting. This is where it starts. Apple has also added support for unified purchases between Mac and iOS. So if the developer makes an app compatible with Mac and iOS, you can buy them all at once if the developer so chooses. And there's also a hidden feature in 13.4 for OS recovery. Again, like car key, it's a feature that's dormant. It's hidden until Apple activates it, but essentially you'll be able to restore your iPhone over the internet or using another iOS device without needing to use a computer. Super interesting stuff. Also starting with 13.4, HomePod will not show up as HomePod OS or iOS. It'll just be a number whenever you get an update for one of those. And Apple has added communication limits inside of screen time where you can limit phone, FaceTime messages and iCloud contacts and within an allotted time or just in general. And of course, how can I forget? CarPlay now allows you to use third-party navigation apps on the main screen. So that's no longer restricted to just Apple Maps. And within Safari, this should be a feature that works. It's not for me. So when selecting a URL and then clicking into it once, you should be able to just pop the cursor in. And on 13.4 here, that's not working for me. Apparently that's a new feature they're adding, but not working. The Measure app has a new icon for the quick action shortcut. Previously not solid, just an outline. Inside there's a new animation for the measure application for calibrating. It will now go side to side and upwards instead of this cube. There's a slightly new animation when disabling the VPN and a larger bolder icon. And in the health app, if we go into browse, go all the way to the bottom, you can now add an account from your medical provider here. And in stocks, Apple has updated the old Yahoo icon with a new Yahoo Finance icon. Also when booting 10.2 and 10.5 inch iPads, the Apple logo is now centered. This is to make it more synchronous with the 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pros, which have their Apple logo centered. Interesting change. All right, so moving on, let's see what the Geekbench numbers are. So on the right is 13.3.1, on the left 13.4. And as you can see, quite a divide here. Now a multi-core score is lower, but single core is roughly the same. And uh, in performance, I wouldn't say it's really particularly worse. I've been using iOS 13.4 as my daily in the beta form for the last two months. It's quite an extensive beta actually. And it's been fairly good. My one complaint is the battery life. The battery life has been abysmal on my iPhone 11 Pro series and on the Max, it has been affected also. So I'm hoping that they resolved something in the Goldmaster in the final build here before releasing and that it will be improving. By the way, if you guys were on the beta seed and you were on the GM, you will not see a different update. It's actually the very same one. So same build number as the Goldmaster. You will not have an update in there. Also, there are a ton of smaller changes that I didn't mention here. These were just some of the new ones and the bigger stuff. In the actual change log, Apple lists a bunch of changes and fixes here. So as you can see, it's an extensive update. It's a massive update and one you should be updating to immediately. I couldn't think of any reason other than jailbreak why you shouldn't update. And iOS 13.4 will be able to be jailbroken on the check rain devices either way. But if you're on iPhone XS and above and you want to jailbreak, 
don't update, stay on 13.3.1 for now anyways. My experiment with Samsung is coming to an end here soon, so I'll be making the decision whether to switch back, but 13.4 is so nice, so enticing, man, so smooth. Apple has fixed a bunch of issues and I cannot wait for iOS 14, which we're hearing so much about. All right, new iPad Pro video tomorrow, guys. Stay tuned, super excited. Actually, the trackpad feature in general, it's got me excited about the iPad again. That's awesome. One of the coolest things I've seen from Apple in a minute. All right, guys, thanks. Peace.